Here is another helpful video for those of you who are not going to be building a straight picket fence like this, but maybe one with a curve in it. Now, this video was a request by one of the viewers and um, they said, how do you do it? I have another video out there. I'll put a link in here somewhere or I'll put a link in the video description box. But they were uh, the other video shows you building a fence where you don't have um, a decorative top, um, something that comes to a point or some type of a shaped thing. You can simply just nail the pickets in, droop the line, and then cut the fence as needed. And um, so I hope this helps. The I'm going to kind of throw a lot of information into this video uh, and uh, going to throw some math in there, which uh, a lot of people always love the math. But heck, without the math, we wouldn't be able to figure out how to space everything out here. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need to do is put a nail or a screw in and then put some type of a string. And you might want to use a nylon string. A, um, a string that is going to bend. I've actually had strings that, you know, um, don't really bend much. You can pull them tight, but they're not going to have a nice sag in it like this one here. So I like my nylon strings um, for something like that. You're also going to need to attach a screw and attach a string to the bottom. Now I'm showing you how the fence the fence is already built, but uh, I've noticed that it's a lot easier to explain things when you get an idea of where we've been, what's happening before we get started. So let's go ahead and remove the fencing boards in between. Now, I'm assuming that you're going to be starting with a situation like this. However, it's not going to be a big deal. If you change it, you'll just be able to, you'll just need to do the measuring according to the boards that you're working with. But you are going to need to start with two points, of course, and uh, have your strings nice and tight on the bottom and then have the string sagging at the top. And we're also going to lay out the um, railing boards. Now for this particular fence, it's going to be six a six inch spacing. That's going to be a three and a half inch wide picket here or fencing board three and a half inches wide with a two and a half inch space in between now you can do this a couple of different ways you can lay out the space in between the pickets and then the picket then the space then the fence picket give you something like this here take a look at it from the back so two and a half inches three and a half inches, or we can just simply make a mark at six inches, six inches, and then make sure that the boards, when we attach them, are going to be on that side. Now let's go ahead and show you how I figured out the spacing here. Now, I measured from the starting picket on the right side and uh, the other one on the left side. So the measurement here is in between these two um, fence pickets or fencing boards. So I, I, I got to start with something. I got to start with some type of a measurement. And this is the measurement we're going to be starting with. So our measurement is seven foot, eight and a half inches or 92 and a half inches, 92.5 as a decimal. The fencing boards are going to be three and a half inches wide, three and a half inches wide. And the height really doesn't matter because you can make your fence as large as you want. This is going to be four foot, five foot, um, two foot, whatever. The principle for figuring the curve is going to be the same. And the math for figuring out the spacing will be the same also. So let's go ahead and start with example one. And this isn't the example I used, but let's just say that I was going to use 10 boards. If I did, I would multiply that by 3.5. That gives me 35 inches. So I would have 35 inches of fencing boards. I'm going to subtract that number from the overall distance, 92 and a half inches. That's going to give me 57.5. This is the dimension. 
that I'm going to divide the units of my spacing to figure out how wide it would be. So I'm going to add one number to the number of pickets. So here I have 10. The next number is going to be 11. If I'm going to use 14 pickets, then I'm going to um, divide 15 units into the measurement that I need. So here we have 11 units and we divide this into 57.5 and this would give us a five and almost a quarter inch spacing in between our boards. Now that's going to be a little too wide. So now if that's the, if that's what you want, that's fine. But uh, um, for this type of fence here, I think it's going to be a little too too big. And you could always do it three and a half inches if you have three and a half inch wide um, pickets, three and a half inches wide. You could always just simply put a three and a half inch space in between here and then another picket three and a half inches if that's going to be easier. And it actually works. So this this is what we have here a five and a quarter inch space basically um, and uh, we would have 11 units. In example two, I'm going to use 14, un uh, 14 boards and uh, that if I multiply it by three and a half inches I get 49 inches. So I got 49 inches of fencing that would go in here and I'm going to subtract that from the overall width I get 43 and a half inches. I'm going to divide 15 into 43 and a half inches. That's going to give me 2.9 or almost three inches of space in between. And uh, remember, I if I got 14 pickets, 14 of the individual fencing pickets, I'm going to need to add one for the spacing. And you could always just go through one of my examples, stop the video and count everything. Count the boards and then count the spaces in between if this isn't making sense. So here's actually the spacing that I used for it. That And I used 15 of the fence pickets, multiplied it by 3.5, 52 and a half is what uh, I get. Subtract that from 92 and a half inches. Now I get 40 inches. I'm going to divide 16 into 40. That's going to give me 2.5 inches. And then once I have those numbers, I can lay out the marks accordingly. So let's go ahead and remove the fencing post here, set up our string line. And again, you can, if you want to have a lower slope or if you want to have more of a slope, just simply loosen up the string. If you want to have less, tighten up the string until you get what you want um, or the desired look of it. And if you're building multiple fences and you want to have the same slope in the center, wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe cut a block and have it here and you could just simply set a two by four up here and then pull the string until you get the desired uh, measurement that you want. And that could be also a um, something that would go all the way down to the ground. You know, you could have a board um, cut from here to the ground that would sit on top of the ground if that would work for you um, to uh, speed things up. So in order to figure out the height of the board, what we're going to need, we're going to line it up with the bottom. So we're going to set it right where it goes and then line it up with the bottom. And that would look something like this. Then we're going to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. And I don't recommend putting any temporary screws in here because you're going to be putting holes in your fence because this board is actually going to lower. So it's not like you're going to, if, if you were, if the tops were going to be shaped, you could put the screws in and then um, mark the boards accordingly. But with these, you're not going to be able to. You're going to have to hold them in place and make sure that the spacing is the correct dimension. And then you can see that this is the distance we're going to need to lower this particular fence board. So the best way I could suggest, and, I, and, and if you're going to be painting or staining your fence, you're going to have to do this a little different. But you can, you're going to need to come from the center and you could probably do this with a tape measure. Just put the hook, the tape over the top and measure down around the center, somewhere close to the center. 
and then get the distance that you need. So our board is three and a half inches wide. Half of that is one and three quarter inches on each side, center of the board there. And then we're going to have a one and 13 sixteenths, almost one and seven eighths of an inch. And this is the distance right here we're going to cut off of the bottom. So, and this is what makes it easy. You, you're using the bottom string here. Now, I'm not suggesting there aren't any easier ways. If there are, feel free to make another video, put it on YouTube and uh, share it with everyone. But um, the cutting, doing it this way, I think is the easiest way I can think about for do-it-yourselfers. And I really can't think of, for, for me, if I was going to do this and I only had to do a few panels, it's the exact way I would do it. If I had to do quite a few of these, then I would probably cut a pattern for the top and uh, use that to figure out everything. So um, let's go ahead and cut the bottom off here. And then we will just simply lower it into position here. And this is going to be our first board. Now, in order to finish the fence, all we're going to do is repeat this process with the rest of the boards. Put the board in here, make sure it's lining up with the bottom string, and then simply start adjusting them accordingly until you have completed your project. Now, this brings us to the end of the video. If there is anything in here that did not make sense, feel free to leave a comment or a question in the comment area and I will answer it as soon as possible. So if this was helpful, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up button.